is one solution. Let's say this is the problem, right? So you have uh, this guy being slow. Let's say these two services, right? They say these two are slow. This path is slow. And you're wondering why this is taking time. Well, that's because the calls to this guy is consuming all the resources, this thread. Now, one solution could be to have the movie catalog service be a little smart, right? The movie catalog service can say, I'm sending so many requests to this guy, but this guy is not responding on time. He's taking a lot of time. So rather than continue to send requests and eventually run out of resources for some of the other faster microservices, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a bit smarter. All right. I'm going to see what is the service that's being slow. I'm going to detect it I'm going to say, oh, I see the movie info service is being slow. Now, what I'm going to do is rather than blindly send requests, let me not send requests for a bit, All right? I'm going to hold off on sending new requests and uh, the rest of the rest of the functionality can go on as is, right? I'm going to take a small break. It detects that, okay, this particular service is not behaving well. Okay, this doesn't get requests for a bit. I'm going to hold off on sending requests. After a period of time, it's going to try again and see if it's recovered. If it's recovered, okay, business as usual, it's going to continue sending requests. And once it realizes, oh, it's acting up again, it's going to stop sending requests. Because no matter how much you time out the request, you're always going to run into an issue. So the best problem, the more scalable and sustainable problem is to see when you realize that something is wrong with a certain microservice, don't even call that microservice to begin with, right? You realize something is wrong. I'm going to say, okay, hold off on sending requests. I'm not going to send requests for a bit. Give it time to recover and then Keep trying once in a while and see if it's recovered. Once it's recovered, I'm going to continue sending requests again. This is a popular pattern for fault tolerance in microservices. This is what it entails, right? First, you detect that something is wrong. The microservice that's calling another microservice has the ability to detect that something is wrong. Then what does it do? It takes some temporary steps to avoid making things Force. Because what happens if some if microservice is struggling and then you send more requests to it, what's going to happen? You're only going to make things worse. So the microservice is smart enough to say, okay, something is wrong with this guy. I'm going to stop sending temporarily for a little bit. I'm going to stop sending requests to it and uh, kind of like deactivate the problem component so that it does not affect downstream components. All right. These three steps are very common in microservice and are not just in microservices, they're very common in a bunch of other fault tolerant systems which have nothing to do with programming and computer science and uh, uh, the field that we are talking about. Does this ring a bell? Something is wrong. There is some kind of a, some kind of a mechanism which breaks the way things are going and then prevents things from getting worse. Well, you might have guessed this, right? This is the circuit breaker pattern. You see that in electrical circuits all the time, right? So let's say there's a spike. There is something that's misbehaving, some electrical component that's misbehaving. What happens? There is this thing that's put in place which breaks the circuit, all right? What does it do when it breaks the circuit? It says, okay, this guy is not getting more electricity anymore, right? It's, it's taking it off the grid, off the circuit for a bit. And then what it does is either through a manual effort, like somebody goes and turns on the circuit breaker again, or automatically it resumes the circuit if everything is working fine. So this is pretty much what a circuit breaker does. All right, so here is something that I've pulled up from Wikipedia. And what a circuit breaker looks like, one of the various circuit breakers, and uh, the definition which I've also pulled from Wikipedia is something like this. It's, it's basic function, at least the definition as it applies to this. Its basic function is to interrupt current flow after a fault is detected. So it's looking for faults. It's looking to see if there is a fault, and then if it detects a fault, it breaks the current flow. And then here's the important thing. Unlike a fuse, right? So there's a difference between a circuit breaker and a fuse. A fuse is something like a, that's a one time only, right? When there is a fault, when there is a spike, the fuse burns out and then the circuit is broken for good. You got to put a new fuse in there. 
The circuit breaker is a little different from a fuse. The circuit breaker can be reset. So somebody can go there and press that switch and say, okay, you've broken the circuit. Thanks a lot. You saved my house. Now turn on again. So you can manually turn it on or the circuit breaker has automatic functionality to say, okay, now whatever caused me to break the circuit, okay, that's working fine now. I'm going to continue operating. All right, so it's a standard circuit breaker pattern. Now, how can you apply this to, uh, to something like this, to our, um, our microservice architecture? Where do you apply a circuit breaker? Technically, you can apply a circuit breaker to every microservice that's calling somebody else, calling another microservice. Because when there is a call, it can technically lead to consumption of resources, right? Something else can be slow because of which it's taking up all the resources and then the threads are all consumed. But it's especially important when there is a microservice that's calling two microservices, in which case you don't want one microservice being slow to affect the other microservice, which would have been, which would have been fast if that request has gone through, but that request is not going through because the threads are all full, right? So for those cases, it's more important for you to have circuit breakers. And in this case, it's very important to have circuit breaker in the Mobi catalog service case. This guy needs to have a circuit breaker. So it's gonna check, okay, is Mobi Info doing well? Is Rating Status Service doing well? The minute it detects, okay, Mobi Info is, uh, this guy's sick, not doing well, gives it some time and then it breaks the circuit. Whenever a request comes in and says, hey, give me Mobi Info, it's like, nope, I'm not calling that guy, that guy's not listening to me, All right? But when a request comes in for ratings data service, it says, oh, this guy's good. I'm gonna call and return. And it's gonna keep doing this for a while. And in the meantime, it's gonna check, hey, are you still okay, man? Are you still not feeling well? Once it detects that this guy is good, then it's gonna continue sending requests, right? That's basically what the circuit breaker does in the context of microservices.